Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya. I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. This lecture will be an introduction to suboptimal equalization. In the past lectures, we have seen and discussed the optimal detection strategy, that is the maximum likelihood sequence estimation. And we also discussed the incremental strategy, that is, is there a way by which we can make decisions on the fly for the symbols that we have seen so far, rather than try all possible combinations. That led us to a discussion on the Viterbi algorithm that to an extent allowed us to make decisions based on certain conditions and there were these paths and survivors that you have to keep track of and it worked pretty well. But sometimes even these may prove too complex. Practically the Viterbi algorithm requires you to do something like maintain memory and you know you have to have so many surviving paths and all those kinds of issues start arising. So therefore sometimes you may want to do something simpler or you may have let us say I have a reasonably high SNR and I do not really want to worry about these complex algorithms. Can we do that? So the question is are there more efficient meaning lower complexity suboptimal algorithms that will help our cause using which we do not have to spend all our efforts on implementing something more complicated. So our discussion here will be linear equalization. You can think of them as matrix based approaches or filtering based approaches wherein we are going to essentially construct something like an inverse filter for the channel or something like it. So for example, zero forcing, minimum mean square, error equalizer and so on. So in these situations, you have a lower complexity equalization strategy. That is our discussion for today. In today's discussion, we are going to look at the zero forcing equalizer in particular. If you recall the model with which we have been operating, <coughs> our y of t is b k p of t minus k t plus noise and the noise is additive white Gaussian. Be aware that this capital T is the number of sim the actually the number of seconds per symbol that is it is the duration of one symbol. Hypothetically, let us suppose that at the receiver we oversample or sample at a different rate. That is, let us say we sample at Ts seconds, every Ts seconds, potentially with an offset delta as well. Okay. Then the received samples can be expressed as y convolved with g rx of t uh, evaluated at kts plus delta, where delta is an offset number between 0 and Ts, and you get samples every Ts seconds apart. T s can be t, it can be less than t, typically it is not more than t because if it is more than t you will start missing some symbols. So that is something to keep in mind. So R k is F k plus W k where F k is the signal part which is p convolved with G R x time and evaluated, evaluated at k t s plus delta and W k is the noise part that is n convolved with G R x evaluated at k t s plus delta. <coughs> One key thing to remember here is that n convolved with Rx evaluated at Kts plus delta. This is something which is to be looked at carefully. The noise after convolving with Grx need not be IID, they can be correlated. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, to find the statistics of the noise Wk, we note that n convolved with Grx t is 0 mean, of course, because if you take the expectation, this is 0, we have seen that in the context of signal space. and the autocorrelation function can be defined as 2 sigma square integral grx g star rx of t minus tau dt that is 2 sigma square <coughs> grx star gr <coughs> mf. Okay. The reason we use 2 sigma square is it is like because it is n0, n0 by 2 is uh, sigma square so we use 2 sigma square here it is sigma square per dimension so for complex 2 sigma square grx time convolution gr mf of t. Now what is gr mf? The optimal match filter is g star x of minus t. So wk is n convolved with gr x evaluated at k t s plus delta and that has co auto covariance, co you know covariance of w n plus k w n, maybe n is a wrong choice, w m plus k w m is 2 sigma square integral g r x of t, g r x star of t minus k t s. Remember that this depends on the sample spacing T s, not the symbol spacing. Okay. 
If you want to just revise how we got this, we directly use the signal space related concepts from the original signal space discussions that we had. Essentially, you are filtering the noise and therefore use the filtering of the noise in order to find the discrete covariance appropriately. That's all that we are doing. A point that we are saying is sample spacing, not symbol spacing. <coughs> Let us actually now use a, a, a running example. This example is actually very instructive because in this example, our T is capital 2 because our GTX is 0 to 2 and our T is capital 2, we are sending one symbol every 2 seconds. But in, the, in this case, let us choose TS to be 1. That is, let us sample at twice the rate at the receiver. Now, hypothetically, let us send, you know, just B0 and nothing else. Let us say B0 is 1. So, if you send 1, right, that is like delta K, what you get is this at the receiver. And this, if you sample appropriately by choosing your GRX as the same, you know, some appropriate pulse, let us say GRX is chosen as a rectangle with T is equal to uh, 1 length, then this value will be 1, this value will be half, this value will be minus half and there is a shift here, so there is a 0. So, the response for your sample response for B0 is actually 0, 1, half, minus half. That is, you are essentially shifting it by 1 time instead and then outputting P of T. That is basically the response and if you sample it using an appropriate match filter, you will get 1 half minus half. One more important point is here, if you use the idea which I gave, let us say you choose this as your minus TS by 2, TS by 2, let us say you choose this as your match filtering pulse, you know, uh, before you sample, then your noise is going to be 2 sigma square delta K and because of the careful choice of this particular sampling approach, the noise is IID even in this case. I warned you that it may not be IID, but it is IID because I sampled it at TS. Intuitively, you are essentially sending T equal to 2 and the channel is essentially performing mixing across symbols. So, for example, the impact of symbol, this symbol is seen after 1 second. But if you sample exactly at 1 second intervals, you are not going to get the impact of the noise correlation. So, this particular pulse is very, very good. Now, <clears throat> let us consider a block of 5 consecutive samples. If you consider a block of 5 consecutive samples with this particular approach, you are going to get RK as BK minus 1 times half minus half plus BK times 0, 1. Oh, okay. How do we get this? Let us actually go to a notebook and then just check and then we will get back. So, now remember our channel looks like this. This is 1, <coughs> this is half, this is minus half, <coughs> okay. This value is 1, okay, this, so it is at 1, 2, 3, 4, okay. This is our channel. Our sampled response, if you use this TS equal to 1 rectangle, will be 0, 1, half, minus half, okay. Let us say that B k minus 1 essentially sees this particular response. B k is going to see this shifted by 2 because the symbol rate is 2 seconds, one symbol every 2 seconds. So, for B k the let us I am going to now look use it as a superposition. Let us say only B k minus 1 is present in my universe. This is the way I will get it. If only B k is present in my universe, then I will get 0. 0, 0, 1, half, minus half. Then if only B k plus 1 is in my universe, I will get 0, 0, 0, you get a 1 here, so I will put 0, 0, 1, half, minus half. Now let us say that you take 5 consecutive symbols and which 5 consecutive symbols are you taking? You are taking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you take these 5 consecutive symbols and write them in a, you know, in the, in the matrix form, the output is going to be B k minus 1 times and I am taking only these symbols. So, I will get half minus half 0, 0, 0 because I have 0, 0, 0 here. Similarly, 
sorry plus b k times and I am going to now take the same 0 1 half minus half. So, 0 1 half minus half 0 plus b k k plus 1 times start here 0 0 0 1 half 0 0 0 1 half. Okay. Now, you may argue why are you taking these 5 symbols, why are you not taking those, why are you not taking these and so on. You are right. Okay, you know, I, I, there is no particular reason why you should take only these and not some others, but it is instructive and later we will relax this assumption also, but we are taking these 5 symbols just to provide an example. Let us now go back. So, if you are, if you just want to check my working, half minus half 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 half minus half 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 minus half, sorry, 0, 0, 0, uh, it is not minus half, I made a slight error while writing, it is actually half only, yeah. Now, coming back, so I have written the same thing over here, b k minus 1 times that plus b k times that plus b k plus 1 times that plus the noise and you can write this as u b k plus w k where u has is this matrix which you get by combining these columns. Okay. w k are Gaussian noise samples and like we discussed just previously, the w k and w k plus 1, w k plus 2 are all IID, they are independent also, uncorrelated but independent because of Gaussian. And let us now define our vector, vector b k as b k minus 1, b k, b k plus 1. In other words, we are saying that we can write this as r k, where r k is <coughs> r k minus 2, k, k minus 1, k, k plus 1, k plus 2 to be, or uh, I think, uh, I think notation wise we have to be consistent. So, maybe r k minus 1, r k, r k plus 1, r k plus 2, r k plus 3, something like that. We can write this as half minus half 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, half minus half 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, half times b k minus 1, b k, b k plus 1. So, we are going to infer something about b k at least from this. Okay, w k is w 0, w 1, w 2 and so on. Okay, I am mean, not writing that separately. Okay, w k also has a vector form. <coughs> now, so for 5 consecutive samples, we have this particular form and this is our u, which is exactly what we discussed. <coughs> we are now going to define the zero forcing equalizer in this manner. Let us isolate b k as b k u 0 plus summation i not equal to 0 b k plus i u i plus w k. In our case, we have two columns of u i that is u 0 is our middle column, the corresponding to the one corresponding to b k minus 1, but one corresponding to b k plus 1 we are going to write separately. Now, the concept is we are going to use r and we are going to force the inter symbol interference to 0 that is find a vector c such that c multiplied by u 1 and c multiplied by u minus 1 is 0 and c multiplied by u 0 is 1. That is c Hermitian u 0 is 1 and c Hermitian u i for all other i's is 0. This is called the zero forcing equalizer because it forces the interference to 0. That is it makes sure that the contribution of all the other terms is 0. Now, it can be shown that this is u times u Hermitian u whole inverse times e where e is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay. Now, why is, why is it exactly this form? Okay. It turns out that there is something called a projection matrix and you want to project, a, if you want to project a matrix, may project a vector onto a particular space, this can be used. But I will give you a more intuitive answer. If you now take u times u Hermitian u whole inverse, right? This can be thought of as something like a partial inverse of this, partial inversion of this matrix, not exactly because if you multiply this particular matrix, if you multiply this by u Hermitian, you get identity. Now, this E allows you to essentially force or rather get that particular part of the vector which, just a minute, get that particular part of u that makes only C Hermitian u 0 1. That is, if you now want to confirm, right, if you do C Hermitian u 0, 
okay let me let me do this okay if you just let me go back there and uh, do it so see we're saying czf u times u hermitian u whole inverse times and we want 0 1 0 is this correct it is correct because u hermitian u is a 3 cross 3 matrix its inverse will be a 3 cross 3 matrix why this because if you do c z f hermitian times u okay notice what happens um, sorry u b okay this is equal to u hermitian u whole inverse whole hermitian but that will become this times u hermitian u times b and this um, times 0 1 0 pre multiplied this is equal to 0 1 0 multiplied by b k minus 1 b k b k plus 1 which is equal to b k that is this intuition essentially allows you to choose a vector that exactly makes u 0's column inner product with c h 1 and zeros out the others. Now it is true that you cannot find the zero force equalizer in all situations there are some conditions on the columns of u in fact some linear independence conditions for you to be able to do it. But whenever you can zero forcing equalizer allows you to get get uh, the b k eliminating the contributions of b k minus 1 and b k plus 1 ok. Everything is good, but if you look at the geometric picture there is a vector space spanned by u minus 1 and a vector space spanned by u 1. You can think of the columns u minus 1 and u 1 as vectors. You are now looking to find a projection ok such that you are orthogonal to u minus 1 and u 1 so that you can get only u 1. Why? Because if you use that particular projection it nulls the contribution of u minus 1 and u 1 then you are essentially scaling to get u 0 to unity. In other words you are saying that I want only u 0 and I want u minus 1 u plus 1's contribution to go to 0. So, find a matrix that does this and after multiplying by that matrix you then scale u 0 to make it unity ok. Remember we want C Hermitian u 0 to be 1. So, you have we denote that by P perpendicular to denote that it is perpendicular to the uh, space of interference I have written P 1 but P you know perpendicular. So, this is C is equal to alpha times P perpendicular u 0 with alpha equal to 1 upon P perpendicular u 0 square that ensures that you have unit norm that is smaller the orthogonal projection the larger the scale factor this is a problem because it can boost noise. I will give you a simple example. Let us say that you have two vectors like this. If you have two vectors like this or rather if you have two vectors like this which are already close to orthogonal then it is very easy you just have to slightly align this to the perpendicular part and you are done. But you have this right you have to find this projection onto this axis and boost it to be unity. In other words the space of all vectors perpendicular to the interference you are finding the projection of u and boosting it to be 1. Unfortunately when the vector spaces get mixed up like when the symbols are very very mixed up you may end up having to boost the noise significantly that is something which we will see in our GNU radio experiment as well. So, the noise variance per dimension when you use the zero forcing equalizer is nu square zero forcing is sigma square times the norms czf. Why is that? Because czf multiplies the noise. So, C czf square norm times sigma square is your effective noise per dimension and this is equal to sigma square alpha square p norm u square which is sigma square by norm p perpendicular u 0. The corresponding noise if you did not have intersymbol interference in which case your p did not need to be anything is sigma square by norm u 0 square and the noise enhancement which you get because of the use of zero forcing equalization is given by this expression that is norm u 0 square by p perpendicular norm u 0 square. So, this p perpendicular is actually uh, the 
matrix that causes some problems because if your space, if your vector spaces are not separable, then it can result in a lot of noise enhancement. For the running example, that is my U which I just constructed, you can check that your CZF is 5 upon 8, 5 upon 8, 5 upon 8, minus, upon, minus 1 by 8, 1 by 4. That's your CZF. Now, you can sort of see that these are all values which are less than 1, but you know, they are not really, really small. Noise, as we discussed, is complex normal with variance 2.5 sigma square. So, for BPSK, only the real part matters because we took a complex model. So, 1.25 sigma square is the noise and EB is 1.5. Why? Because the pulse essentially has amplitudes, uh, pulse has 1 half minus half. If you add up the energies, you get 1 plus 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, which is 3 by 2. The symbol error rate, if you assume that it is Q of root of A E B by N naught, remember Q of root of 2 E B by N naught, it is for BPSK when there is no intersymbol interference. You can actually find A and A will turn out to be 16 upon 15. That is, it is very close to 1. Therefore, the loss in terms of performance is 10 log, uh, I think uh, 15 upon 8 because you have 2 here and that becomes 2.73 dB. And this 2.73 dB is actually a lot because you know uh, 2.73 dB is very close to 3 dB and this is the loss which you are encountering because of the noise enhancement because of the use of the zero forcing equalizer. These kinds of situations do occur when you either have a low SNR or when you have a huge amount of intersymbol interference. That is something which you should keep in mind. One problem which I mentioned was that we used the block based approach where we used a block length of 5, but the question is can we extend it to larger block lengths? Of course, you will have bigger and bigger matrices, but can we have a more continuous filtering based approach? After all, our channel is a filter, can we just use filtering? In this particular case, this example, you can check that if you have T is equal to 2 and T s is equal to 1, we can construct the, we can represent the channels as 1 plus 1 minus half Z inverse and Ha and half. Why? Because if you remember our field, our P of T was 1 half minus half. Since you are sampling twice the rate, if you look at the 1 and the 1 off, like every 2 seconds, you will get 1 and minus half, then the next sample will be half. So, this is the effective split of the two uh, filters and you end up getting H1 of Z to be 1 minus half Z inverse and H2 of Z to be half. To actually end up with a proper inversion, we need some, you know, H1 times G1 plus H2 times G2 and so on equal to just a delay. Just a delay because a delay is good enough. Delays are acceptable to an extent. You do not want any other filtering effect. So, if you can come up with GIs that satisfy this condition, then you can build a filter based equalizer very, very easily. Let us see whether that is possible. So, our CZF has this form if you remember. If I take this one, this one and this one and reverse it, I get 2 by 8 plus 5 by 8 Z inverse plus 5 by 8 Z inverse that gives me this filter and if I take these two, I get minus 1 by 8 plus 5 by 8 Z inverse which is this filter. You can confirm, you can verify that H1 times G1 plus H2 times G2 is Z inverse. In fact, for fractionally phased space equalizers, there is a sufficient condition that H i of Z should not have common zeros. If they do not have common zeros, you can always find G1 and G2 that give you a nice equalization. <coughs> In, and uh, this is actually not going to be much better or worse than your block based equalizer because it is the same block based equalizer in disguise just with the continuous implementation. But for symbol space equalizers, that is when your sample rate equal to, is equal to the symbol rate. 1 upon H of Z is the only equalizer. So, that is a problem. So, the zero forcing equalizer is one suboptimal equalizer that you can consider, but a warning it will largely work well only under high SNR or when you have vector space related, uh, you know, when you have vector spaces which are quite separate, that is something to keep in mind. One more problem is that this results in significant noise enhancement and the Gaussian noise gets boosted significantly. In the next class, we will discuss a minimum mean square error based approach that actually accounts for the effect of the noise and does not cause these kinds of problems so that you have a sort of balanced performance even when the presence, even when there is presence of high noise. Thank you.